This is section 5 of our tutorial. The section title is Full Rank Spatial Covariance Analysis, FCA. In this section, we introduce FCA, which is an underdetermined BSS method proposed by Duong, Vincent, and Grivenval in 2010. This section is structured as follows. Section 5.1 describes a signal model. Section 5.2 describes source signal estimation using the multi-channel winner filter. And finally, section 5.3 is devoted to signal parameter estimation. So now we describe the signal model. Before describing the signal model in FCA, let us revisit that in R1CA. In R1CA, the signal model is given as shown here. Here, each term in the summation is a source image or the contribution of a source signal to the mixtures. As shown in the figure, the source image lies on a line parallel to the mixing vector. So the covariance matrix of the source image becomes the rank 1 matrix as shown here. The green part is a variance of the source signal modeling its power spectrum, which we denote by H. The red part is a rank 1 matrix called the spatial covariance matrix modeling the mixing process which we denote by R. A limitation of this method lies in that it cannot deal with reverberation effectively. In contrast, the signal model in FCA is given as shown here where C denotes a source image. Here, there's no noise term, and this is because C can model not only source signals, but also background noise. Unlike in R1CA, the covariance matrix of the source image is modeled by a full-length matrix as shown here. Here, H is the variance of the source signal as before, and R is a full rank spatial covariance matrix modeling the mixing process. Consequently, as shown in the figure, the source image lies more or less in an ellipse representing the spatial covariance matrix. Since the rank 1 constraint on the spatial covariance matrix has been relaxed, more flexible modeling is possible than in R1CA, leading to empirically more effective source separation under reverberation. In FCA, each source image is modeled by a multivariate complex Gaussian distribution with covariance matrix HR. Source images are assumed to be mutually independent.
Consequently, the mixtures X have a multivariate complex Gaussian distribution again as shown here. Here we show a simulation example. We generated mixtures according to our signal model by running a Python script full rank mixtures i pi and b, which is available to you. We see each source image lay more or less in an ellipse representing the spatial covariance matrix R. Consequently, the mixtures, which are the sum of the source images, looked like this. Now we move on to section 5.2, multi-channel winner filter. Let us apply the multi-channel winner filter to our problem of estimating source images. The data x are now the mixtures x. The unknown variable u is now the source image c. Consequently, the estimate of the source image by the multi-channel winner filter becomes like this. Furthermore, X and C are related to each other by this signal model. The covariance matrix of C equals HR. Since source images are mutually independent, their cross-correlation matrix is zero. Therefore, the source image estimate can be rewritten like this. Here, the parameters H and R must be estimated. Now we move on to section 5.3, signal parameter estimation. It is based on the maximum likelihood method. Here we introduce two algorithms, namely the EM algorithm and the majorization minimization algorithm. As we saw earlier, the mixtures have this complex Gaussian distribution. Let us denote this covariance matrix by capital X. In the maximum likelihood method, the parameters are estimated by maximizing the log likelihood, which is given by this equation as before. In our case, the latent variables Z consist of source images. What's tricky here is that we exclude the N source image from Z. The E step updates posterior distribution of Z given X, which is given by this equation because of the Bayes theorem. To compute this, we need the prior distribution shown in blue and the likelihood shown in orange. The prior distribution decomposes as shown here on the assumption of sample independence and source independence by using this model the prior distribution can be rewritten like this As for the likelihood, 
it also decomposes like this. By using these equations, the likelihood can be rewritten like this. Consequently, although we omit the details, the posterior distribution turns out to be a Gaussian distribution shown here and the mean mu tilde and the covariance matrix sigma tilde are given as shown in these equations. The M step uses the Q function defined by this equation. To calculate this, we need the posterior distribution shown in red and the joint distribution shown in green. We've already computed the posterior distribution in the E step, as shown here. As for the joint distribution, it decomposes into the product of the prior distribution and the likelihood, as shown here. We've already derived them in the previous slide, and so the joint distribution can be rewritten like this. Therefore, although we omit the details, the Q function becomes as in this equation. After some calculations, the Q function can be rewritten like this. Here, mu and sigma are the parameters of the marginal posterior distribution of each source image. Parameter update rules for the M step can be obtained by partial differentiation of this Q function. This is a pseudocode of the resulting EM algorithm. In addition to the EM algorithm, another useful optimization technique is applicable to FCA, namely a modularization minimization algorithm or an MM algorithm for short. Let us consider minimizing the cost function j. The MM algorithm uses an auxiliary function j plus. It satisfies this condition. That is, the minimum value of j plus with respect to psi coincides with j. Here, psi is called auxiliary variables. The MM algorithm uses J plus to update psi and theta alternately. Psi is updated with theta fixed so that J plus is minimized. Theta is updated with psi fixed so that J plus decreases or at least does not increase. The figure shows that J is guaranteed to be non increasing. Obviously, J plus is non increasing 
at each update of Psi or Theta. Moreover, after each update of Psi, the value of J plus coincides with that of J. Therefore, J is guaranteed to be non-increasing at each update of Psi or Theta. Now we apply the MM algorithm to FCA. Please recall that the objective is maximizing the log likelihood. And this is equivalent to minimizing the negative log likelihood given by this equation. This cost function includes the inverse of the sum of matrices. and the log debt of the sum of matrices. These are difficult parts to handle, so we aim to modulate them by functions that are easier to handle. Let us first discuss the red part. We can use this inequality which states that the inverse of the sum of matrices omegas is modulated by the sum of the inverses of the matrices omegas, where matrices gammas can be considered as kind of weights. Here, the meaning of this matrix inequality is that the right-hand side minus the left-hand side is positive semi-definite. The inequality holds for any positive definite matrices omega and any m order matrices gammas that sum up to the identity matrix. Now, as for the blue part, we can use this inequality, which can be regarded as a matrix extension of the inequality shown here, stating that a tangent of the logarithm is always above the logarithm because of its concavity. Using these inequalities, we obtain an auxiliary function shown here, that modularizes the cost function. The auxiliary variable psi consists of gammas and pi's. This auxiliary function no longer includes an inverse of a sum of matrices or a log depth of a sum of matrices, and so it is much easier to handle than the original cost function. As I said earlier, Psi is updated with data fix so that the auxiliary function J plus is minimized. This can be done by using the equality conditions of the two inequalities as shown here. On the other hand, data is updated with Psi fixed so that J plus is decreased. The update rules are obtained by partial differentiation as shown here. This slide shows the pseudocode of a MM algorithm. As in R1CA, FCA is also computationally expensive. 
This is because matrix inversion is required at each time frequency point and each iteration of the EM or the MM algorithm. This is section 6 of our tutorial. The section title is Fast FCA. This is the tutorial structure. In this section, we introduce Fast FCA for underdetermined BSS, which we proposed in 2018. Although applicable even to the underdetermined case, FCA and R1CA have the drawback of being computationally expensive. This is because massive numbers of matrix inversion are required for optimization. Fast FCA introduced in this section is a computationally efficient extension of FCA. The key here is that it introduces the constraint that the spatial covariance matrices are jointly diagonalizable. Interestingly, the cost function of fast FCA turns out to be a mixture of those of ICA and NMF. So, fast FCA can be optimized by leveraging efficient optimization algorithms that have been developed for ICA and NMF. Fast FCA utilizes the well-known property of diagonal matrices that matrix inversion amounts to mere inversion of diagonal entries, which can be computed efficiently. By exploiting this property, fast FCA can compute matrix inversions in FCA efficiently, leading to efficient BSS. As I said, numerous matrix inversions are required in FCA. Especially, we need to compute the inverse of the covariance matrix X for all frequency i and all frame j at each iteration. To compute these matrix inversion efficiently, we exploit the property that inversion of a diagonal matrix reduces the mere inversion of diagonal entries. A naive idea is that if the spatial covariance matrices of all sources are diagonal, then the matrix inversion in FCA can be computed efficiently. In practice, however, they are far from being diagonal because of high signal correlation between microphones. This motivates us to consider joint diagonalization of the matrices R, as in this equation. Here, W denotes the common non-singular matrix, which we call a decorrelation matrix, and lambda denotes diagonal matrices. In the two-source case, we can obtain such W and lambda by solving a generalized eigenvalue problem. We exploited this idea to make FCA efficient in the two-source case, which is an earlier idea of fast FCA. When there are more than two sources, however, such W and lambda may not exist depending on the values of R.
So, in order to deal with an arbitrary number of sources, first FCA forces R to be jointly diagonalizable, meaning that there exist such W and lambda. We call it a joint diagonalizability constraint, or JD constraint for short. In this case, R can be parameterized as shown here, where W and lambda are considered as parameters to be estimated by the maximum likelihood method. In both FCA and fast FCA, the mixtures X are modeled by this distribution. The difference between these methods lies in how the spatial covariance matrix R is parameterized. In FCA, it is a free parameter, whereas in fast FCA, it is parameterized like this, based on joint diagonalization. So, by plugging this in the above distribution, we obtain the fast FCA model as shown here. Here, please note that X following this distribution is equivalent to W Hermitian transpose X following this distribution. W Hermitian transpose X is the mixtures transformed by the decorrelation matrix, which we call decorrelated mixtures. So this implies that the decorrelated mixtures, Y, are independent. In the fast FCA model, we make the following assumptions. The first one is linear transform. The decorrelated mixtures Y equals the mixtures X transformed by the decorrelation matrix W. The distributions of X and Y are related by the determinant of W. The second one is output independence. The decorrelated mixtures Y are independent. The third one is sample independence. By using this fast FCA model, we can define fast FCA cost function. We take the maximum likelihood approach, which is equivalent to minimizing the negative log likelihood. By putting all the above equation together, we have the negative log likelihood of this form. Here, the marginal distribution of each decorrelated mixture, P of Y, is given by this equation. Thus, minus log P in the cost function is given as shown here. So, our cost function is given by this equation. Defining matrices L and H by these equations, we have this. Consequently, we can rewrite the cost function as in this equation.
Interestingly, this cost can be viewed as a mixture of ICA and NMF costs. Indeed, the blue part can be regarded as a cost of time-varying Gaussian ICA relevant to update in W On the other hand, the green part can be regarded as a cost of Itakura Saito NMF relevant to updating LNH. Consequently, we can optimize the cost efficiently by alternately applying ICA updates for W and NMF updates for LNH. An optimization algorithm for fast FCA can be designed by combining any ICA algorithm and any Itakura Saito NMF algorithm. In the following slides, we show two algorithm examples, namely IP plus EM and IP plus MM algorithms. The IP plus EM algorithm is the combination of iterative projection for ICA and the EM algorithm for NMF. The IP plus MM algorithm is a combination of IP for ICA and an MM algorithm for NMF. This is a pseudocode of the IP plus EM algorithm for fast FCA. This is a pseudocode of the IP plus MM algorithm for fast FCA. Once the parameters have been estimated, the source images can be estimated by the multi-channel winner filter. Here we show that the filter has a particularly interesting form in the case of fast FCA. The source image estimate by the multi-channel winner filter is given by this equation. Here, the red part is a parameterization of the spatial covariance matrix. Since this cancels with this, and this comes out of the parentheses as WH, we have this. Moreover, since this is diagonal, it can be rewritten like this. So, the multi-channel winner filter can be decomposed into three parts as shown in the block diagram. The green part decorrelates the mixtures. The red part can be regarded as single channel winner filters in the decorrelation domain. 
The blue part is the inverse transform or projection back. To confirm the effectiveness of FASTFCA, we conducted an experiment. We simulated an underdetermined condition with four speech sources and three microphones. We measured impulse responses in the real room with the configuration shown in the figure. The source images were generated by convolving 8-second English speech sources with the impulse responses. The mixtures at the microphone were generated by adding the source images. This slide compares FCA and fast FCA in terms of the computation time. The table shows the real-time factor defined by the computation time divided by the data length. We clearly see that fast FCA was significantly faster than FCA. This slide compares FCA and fast FCA in terms of source separation performance, which was measured by the signal to distortion ratio, or SDR. Although fast FCA was significantly faster than FCA, it was able to give SDRs comparable to FCA. We also applied fast FCA to the real recorded mixtures. As we saw in a video in the introduction, we recorded three simultaneous speakers with an IC recorder. We attempted to separate these three speakers with only two microphones on the IC recorder which is a challenging setting. So, let us listen to the results. This is a mixture. We are I'm demonstrating brand of separation for common mixtures of speech in real room with real talkers. This is separated signal 1. USIPCO is a flagship conference of EURASIP addressing all the latest development in signal processing. This is separated signal 2. Amsterdam is the capital and the most popular city of the Netherlands with many beautiful channels. This is separated signal 3. We are Amsterdam demonstrating brand source separation for common mixtures of speech of in real room with real talkers. Although not perfect, separation of three speakers was realized by using only two microphones. However, there is still room for further research for improving source separation performance. So, we would like to conclude this section. In this section, we introduced fast FCA. Although it was significantly faster than FCA, it was able to give SDRs comparable to FCA. The efficiency of fast FCA makes it applicable even to large data 
such as data augmentation for machine learning. It is also suitable for limited computational resources encountered in hearing aids, distributed microphone arrays, and online processing.